Hey guys, what's going on? So, before we start tarot readings, I just want to talk a little bit about Scorpio energy, um, the month of Scorpio, Scorpio season, and the um, new moon we just had in Scorpio. There's going to be Mercury retrograde in Scorpio. Then I want you guys to keep in mind, this is really going to be more of a conversation around the sun, the moon, and some Mercury aspects, and mainly Uranus. So I just wanted to carve out, a, carve out a little time to talk to you before we get into the readings. And you may see me put the astrology chart there for the current um, astrology transits. But just to talk a little bit about it in case some of you guys are wondering about some of the things you've been going through, about some of the things you have been feeling um, in this uh, watery season, in this Scorpio season. We're coming out of a lot of the um, analytical aspects of where some of the placements were coming out of Virgo and Libra season. Um, Virgo being an earth sign, it's going to be a very practical and um, a logical sign as well, being as though they're ruled by Mercury. And um, Mercury is certain processes in the mind and our thinking capabilities and communication capabilities. And the same thing with Libra. Not so much because of Mercury, but because Libra is an air sign. And um, air is the main element of thinking communication so it kind of goes hand in hand so we're coming through two months that were very much so about communication thought processes um organization um analyzing and kind of maybe getting to the bottom of some critical issues and situations so everything was coming more from a thought centered or, or mind centered um place of being and I'm um, thinking and relating to issues but going into Scorpio season that is that is going to shift and I think a lot of people are feeling the shift maybe more so than you would um other times where Scorpio season um give or take the planet um Terry aspects that were going on but I think a lot of people are feeling a big shift into Scorpio season right here at the end of October in this last um two weeks of October October, and then going forward two weeks um, or all throughout Scorpio season or two weeks after the new moon and a new moon it was technically I believe on the 28th which today is the 29th so that would have been yesterday or the 27th I always kind of kind of talk about new moons and things like that in a two-day span because it could start really late or really early one night and go into the next day or something like that so I would say new moon zone for us really was the 27th which was Sunday and Monday which was the 28th and with this um, Scorpio new moon, as well as the sun going into Scorpio on the 23rd, I think it was now that these planets are coming into Scorpio, they are making a um, opposition with Uranus in Taurus. Scorpio um, is Taurus's opposite sign. So they hold a lot of shadow traits of each other. And Uranus is currently retro. I believe Uranus is retrograde in Taurus. Let me just make sure if it's retrograde. So let's see. Yes, currently Uranus is retrograde in Taurus and it's retrograde at four degrees. The sun is currently at six degrees of Scorpio. So that's a really tight conjunction there that new moon we had was at 28 degrees but i'm not so much going by degrees i'm more so going by houses because the degrees are going to tell you how strong you're going to feel it or not but i still consider a new moon in scorpio opposing um taurus uranus and taurus to be an opposition maybe felt at different intensities um by different people so with the sun being opposed to that Uranus and Taurus with the moon being there. We've currently got Venus in Scorpio at 26 degrees and we've got um, Mars is still in Libra at 16 degrees. But Mars is making a square with um, Saturn and Pluto. So that's that's why you may have felt some restraints, because what I see that's going on is a lot of people are going really deep into their emotional realms. So you've thought about things in September, in August, September, not in the beginning of October. You've been thinking about things you um, 
have been thinking about what direction you want to go in, um, how you want to organize and how you want to get things together. And you've been doing it as we work going through Virgo and Libra, Libra season. But now that we come into Scorpio season, it's asking you to feel things on a deeper level. So just not necessarily taking care of things on a surface level, um, being analytical and organization. No, Scorpio wants to take you much deeper to get more so to the root of why you even have to think about those things to the root of why you even have to organize your life or get your life together. What I think a lot of people don't understand about Scorpio or water signs in general. I, I truly feel like the water signs, and I think a lot of people will agree with this, are the most misunderstood signs in the Zodiac. So that's your Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. A lot of people tend to think water signs off operate off of emotion only, not realizing that you know, the anger of an Aries is emotion. The the fears of rejection and the need to be balanced and, and not being able to achieve that balance a lot of times with the Libra could be emotion. Um, the way that a air sign, say the way that a Gemini may go off on you and get upset, that's emotion. So, but it, it may not be always, always the first thing they resort to, but a lot of uh, the other signs are very emotional, even signs they don't think that don't think they are emotional. Even if you try to hide your emotions and not talk about them, you internalize that, that's still emotional. So all of the signs are emotional. It's just that the water signs handle and use those emotions in different ways. And it's a primary go-to for water signs. So a lot of people will describe water signs as, oh, they're emotional. They're not logical. Um, they're not practical or anything like that. Now, practical maybe, give or take. We can debate that one. But as far as logic and mental processes, the some of the smartest people I've met have been water signs. So, and, and what makes it so potent, and I'm not just talking about sun water signs. You can have your Mercury in water, Venus is in water, um, Mars, you know, moon. You could have other things in, in water that would make your, you could have more water in your chart than you do whatever your sun sign is, whether that be earth, air, or um, fire. So I'm not just talking about water suns. I don't want anybody to feel left out or think I'm, I'm trying to focus and say, hey, water suns are special. No, I mean a lot of water sign energy. And what I find with water signs and why they can be so misunderstood, not only are they able to um, feel things and deal in the emotional realm much more than a lot of other people, but they're also very logical and very smart as well. And I find that, that that's the case with Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. They can be very, very smart, but a, a lot of times because of how they use their emotions or because of how we express ourselves, you may not always see that intelligence or because we are kind of slower with the intellect than maybe a, an Aquarius or Libra or Gemini or something like that, or we're not as fast to communicate our thoughts and formulate our thoughts and ideas and relate those to the public like an Aries or Sagittarius or a Libra. So it doesn't mean that it's not there. And the thing I find with water signs is that it takes a lot more time to curate those thoughts and blend them with the feelings. And by the time it actually comes out, you'll get some of the most succinct, succinct, accurate and useful information and practical information that you can get from a lot of other signs. Because the feeling that we put into our intellect and the time that we take to um, really make sure what we want to convey to people and display to people is accurate and true. And we've really sat with that point um, and, and done all the research and everything to convey that information to you. And there's a sense of intuition that goes into the information that we um, we give to others. I think it comes from a, a, a very different place when you talk about water signs. So I think that's why a lot of the signs going into the Scorpio new moon and just Scorpio season in general, you may have felt a big shift in how you feel. There may be some over -emotion, emotions that are getting to you guys. You may find that you're not a usual quote unquote emotional person, but you're looking deeper. You really want to understand why Scorpio is a sign. And I think a lot of people take for granted about Scorpio getting back to the intellect. Scorpio is a very calculated and investigative sign. 
Scorpios might not always pick up something something the quickest, but you better believe they're at the end of the day they're going to be the ones with the most thorough thoroughest, if that's even a word, knowledge about the topic at hand. Because a Scorpio is going to look so deep into a thing until it can totally understand it and then again relay that message to you. So, and when I say look deep into a thing, it's not just looking at this is the facts and this is what's on paper. It's actually seeing the esoteric side of a thing too. Seeing what is unsaid. Seeing the things that lie in the ethers. That lie in certain intuitive things. Sort of how um, you can talk to somebody and you could say something to them. And they could... The words that they say back to you could even either give you the impression that they agree with what you said, um, they understood what you said, or at least if nothing else, they heard what you said. But an expression on a person's face can tell you how they really feel regardless of what their mouth is saying. So if I tell you, you know, I want you to do 100 push-ups, I don't want you to stop or you're going to lose your job. Your face may look at me and say, okay, you know, your mouth may say to me, okay, you know, or your mouth may say to me, no, you know, your mouth may respond for you, but it is your body cues. It is your facial expressions. It is all those things that aren't spoken through word and the intellect that will really tell you how a person feels about something. And this is why they say things like never watch what a person says, watch what they do. Cause I could sit here and tell you, um, I'm green all day. I'm green. I'm green. My complexion is green, but you'll look at me and you'll see I'm brown. Or I can tell you, you know, I hate, I hate, um, moving around a lot or I hate walking around a lot. But if you observe my actions, you may say, Hey, she's a person that walks around a lot and moves around a lot. So how can she really hate it? So it's not so much about what a person tells you. It's about what a person shows you. And I think that is what Scorpio season is about. It's about seeing everything in the unseen and the words that are not spoken. And I think it may be taking a lot of people by surprise because right now, everything in Scorpio is going to be opposing Uranus over there in Taurus. So um, Uranus is new insights. It's out of the box ways of doing things. And Uranus is also a sign of the scientists. It's very scientific. So you guys may be picking apart your feelings and analyzing things on a scientific, scientific level right now. That may be what you're doing. So you may be going really, really deep. And this may be bringing up emotional traumas. This may be bringing up things where you say, well, I thought I had something figured out, but maybe I don't really have it figured out, you know, and that's not to mention for those when we add in the current Saturn and Pluto transit in Capricorn, like I said, Mars is still in Libra. So eventually Mars is going to come in into Scorpio and oppose Uranus, but right now it's still in Libra. So it's squaring Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. Um, and that is really going to put an extra level of um heaviness on the Scorpio season planets and vibes because that's restraint. I, I would know I'm a person who has a Mars and uh Saturn aspect in my natal chart. They're conjunct. So um it's gonna put a lot of restraint on things. So that's a conjunction. Squares I would say could be just as bad or even worse, not calling it a bad aspect, but saying in a way for things to play out more so on a negative side or, or, or on a heavy or serious energy. Because Mars wants to do what it wants to do, but Saturn and Pluto are asking Mars to do things their way, or they're asking Mars to change, or whatever it is that Mars is into in Libra. So say thought processes, um, maybe actions with your friends and relationships, actions taken in relationships. Saturn and Pluto are saying, hey, we need you to really get some structure in these areas of your life. We need you to possibly go back and review how you have done some of these things in this area of your life and ask, are you really balanced when it comes to your actions? Do your actions match your thoughts and the things that you say? Because Libra is about balance, but I always find the one thing that signs are about is what they have the hardest time with. So even though Libra represents balance, a lot of times Libras can be out of balance. So it's asking you to review that and to structure that and to really do the work 
and um, deal with the karmic lessons in regards to your actions, relationships, um, deep feelings about things, you know, bringing Scorpio back into the picture because Mars will be going into Scorpio and then it'll be um, sextile uh, Saturn and Pluto. And then lastly, really quick, let's talk about Mercury. So another reason why things may be so heavy or you may be feeling the Scorpio energy very heavily is because where Mercury is in Scorpio and Mercury is going to go into retrograde in Scorpio on the 31st of the month. So today that I'm doing this video is the 29th and Mercury is currently at 27 degrees of Scorpio. So it's going to retrograde on the 31st, which is, means it's going to move really, really, really slow. And it's going to be in Scorpio for an a extended duration as it retrogrades and goes um, back some degrees in Scorpio. So with Mercury going into retrograde, with that opposition to Uranus, with it being in Scorpio, it's really a time where you're going to have to really, really think deeply about the things you say, how you deal with people, uh, some of your passions and your relationships with people, um, your value, your money, debts and things you owe people, you're going to have to go on a deep level to really figure out if there's issues that you have. You're, it's going to ask you to more look so at character traits, personality traits, habits that keep you in some of these situations. And if you think that you moved on to something, because a lot of times Scorpio can cut things off, they'll move on and that's it. That's done. There's no looking back. And with Mercury retrograde, a lot of times Scorpio is asking Mercury retrograde and Scorpio is going to ask you to look back into things that had to do with, um, eighth house and seventh house nature, considering that Mars is, is still in Libra, to ask you to look back at things that have to do with self, value, partnership, other, what is due to you and what's owed and ask you more on a soul level, more on a karmic level, what do you owe? Do you still have debts that you owe on a karmic level? And can you fix those? Are you still owed debts? on a karmic level and how can you go about fixing those so Scorpio is asking you to look really deeply at the situations in your life to go back review the past to review what's going on in the current as well because Uranus is is current it's it, it's even futuristic so it's it's a blending of the two and looking at what can you do to be better to self to be better in relationship to others. And that's all relationships, work, family, um, you know, whatever, kids, pets, whatever you have a relationship with. Um, how do you use your power? You know, are there debts that you have that you haven't satisfied? What do you owe karmically? Because, you, you know, what goes around comes around. So Saturn, uh, Scorpio is really asking us to look at some of these things and really to lead our life in a new way that is considerate and in the best interests of all. As you know, Uranus um, is the modern day ruler of Aquarius. And as much as Aquarius can be a selfish kind of only looking from a self perspective sign Aquarius is also even though that sounds a little weird they're, they're dynamic in that way Aquarius is also concerned about the greatest the greater good of, of humankind which sacrifices the individual so at the same time where Aquarius is may be um, very introspective when it comes to self they take that same introspective introspection and they're relating it to the world how this introspect introspection this deeper thought this new way of doing things can be greater good for the world because if i can figure it out for myself or if uranus or the cosmos blesses me with this acquiring an insight to see a better way to do things a better way for humanity then it is i through that deep introspection it is I who will relay that message and spread this throughout humanity. So I hope I explained that kind of well on Aquarius because there's, I won't exactly say Aquarius is selfless, but there is an aspect of selflessness about Aquarius that is concerned about the greater good of society. So I just wanted to tell you guys some of those things because I think a lot of people could be going through some really, really deep, 
um, emotional upheavals, um, some really, really deep um, misunderstandings about why they may have certain blockages. And you're going to have to go really deep on a soul level and a karmic level and come out of the mind a little bit as we go into Scorpio season. The mind comes later. First, you have to figure out what you're feeling. Then you got to figure out you know, what you're feeling at a soul level, at a heart level. Then you got to figure out, okay, why am I feeling that way? Which takes you to the past and things you've been through, different conditioning you may have from childhood or, or whatever the case. Then you bring the mental process in to say, okay, well, what can I do different? Now is the place where you start to write down, you start to organize, you start to, you know, find motivational quotes or, or um, actually look for the examples in your life of how you're making changes to make things better. That's when you bring the brain into the um, equation to figure out the actual ways that you're going to accomplish what this deep problem is that you figured that you need to deal with. So if you can use some of those energies as we get more into Scorpio season, I think you'll find that, um, what time is it? Oh, I got to jump off. I can't believe. Oh my gosh. Where does the time go? I think you'll find that you'll have an easier time dealing with Scorpio energy and it'll get you into a better 2020 as we go into the year of 2020. Because, of course, this is a time of the year where we start to buckle down. We start to let go of things that aren't necessary. We're hibernation, hibernating for the winter seasons. So it's a Scorpio starts that theme of only what's necessary. You get what I'm saying? Um, Libra season, the starting of fall, you still kind of feel a little bit of summer. There's still some fun to be had. But as we really get into Scorpio season, it's asking you to do away with anything that's not a, a necessity. Get down to the bare necessities, the heart of an issue and the matter. And then you can figure it out from there. So you really want to think with your soul. You want to tap into your intuition. You really want to go deep within inside yourself and then share that and work on whatever you find there with the people in your life. But most importantly, work on it with yourself. Because if you can be a better person for yourself, you can be a better person for those in your life. And you can lead by example for others to become um, better people. So that's what I wanted to talk about, about the energy that's going on right now. Um, and then we will get into the tarot readings. Thank you guys. Frequency Real Radio, on to the tarot. <laughs> 